We're going to demonstrate to you how Winyard Intelligence can be used to explore data pertinent to an investigation. In this example, we will use newspaper articles gleaned from the web about outlaw motorcycle gangs in Australia as our source documents. Winyard Intelligence first uses text mining techniques to extract entities from the text, such as person names, locations, and references to weapons and drugs. Next, information theory is used to detect significant relationships between entities and assign them a strength value. The result is an entity network that can be used to visualize and navigate around the document collection, and on which we can perform social network analysis to find persons and other entities of interest. We're going to demonstrate two ways of using the tool. In the first scenario, we already have a person of interest, and we'll use the tool to learn more about him. In the second, we'll start with the assumption that we know nothing about the data, and see how the tool helps us to understand what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and log in. The interface gives us several ways of looking at our data. The main panel will be used to display a network of the extracted entities and the relationships between them, and to view source documents. It's in here that we'll carry out most of our exploration. On the right, a set of panels will show further details about network entities, such as related entities and bookmarks. Textual search can also be performed here. Other interface components we'll see later are a timeline and a map interface. The options at the top right let us control our current view. Lastly, at the top of the screen is a search box for telling the system what we want to see. Let's use it now to find our person of interest. In this first scenario, we already have a person of interest. Anthony Zervis was murdered in a brawl between rival gangs that took place at Sydney Airport. We're looking for information that might lead us to his killers. We enter his name into the search box, and a node representing him now appears in the centre of the graph. Clicking on a graph node brings up further information about that entity. In Anthony's case, we see the list of news articles he appears in, as well as other extracted entities that are strongly related to him, which means they are highly likely to appear in the same documents as Anthony does. Entities are categorised by type for easy identification and searching, and these types are colour-coded. From this, we can immediately see that Anthony is related to a large number of people. Various organisations, including the Hells Angels and Comanchero Gangs. Some weapons, locations, and various dates. We can also view the related entities graphically. Right-clicking on a node brings up a context-aware menu, giving us further navigation options, including expanding or collapsing relationships, bookmarking, opening in a new graph, and the ability to reclassify the node as a different type. Let's expand Anthony's node to show other entities related by co-location. We can either view all other entities, or pick on a particular type. In this case, we're looking for suspects, so we'll just choose to see related persons. We now can see who is related to Anthony, but not why. We've seen that Anthony was related to several weapons, so perhaps we can find a connection via the murder weapon. Let's expand Anthony again, and this time we'll choose to see what weapons are related to him. Anthony appears to have been mentioned in connection with quite a few weapons. Let's choose one of the other people, and see if we can establish a connection. Expanding weapons through Sama Potrus shows the two men are linked via references to knife and gun. This is starting to look promising. Let's take a closer look at Usama by seeing what documents he appears in. There appears to be an awful lot of them. We can see from the titles that we appear to be on the right track. There are several references to an airport brawl. We know the date and time of the murder, and the documents are all time-stamped, so we can use the timeline view to further home in on the articles of interest. We can use the timeline to scroll back and forth through time until we have identified the articles most likely to relate to our investigation. We're now homing in on the information we need, and so far we haven't needed to read a single document. Double-clicking on the most promising article brings up a viewer that lets us see the original document. Casting our eye over the text, we see that it is indeed about the incident of interest. 
The article describes a brawl in Sydney Airport between the Comancheros and Hells Angels gangs, sparked when a member of each gang spotted each other on a flight from Melbourne and immediately called home for reinforcements. In the ensuing brawl, Anthony Zervis, the brother of Hells Angel Peter Zervis, died from stab wounds and head injuries. Usama Potras was sentenced to three years in prison over this incident. The network graph we have been exploring was created through a process that began by using sophisticated text mining algorithms to extract entities of interest. We can highlight the extracted entities to see where they occur in this document. The entity related this measure uses the occurrence of each entity to decide the importance of finding two entities in the same document. This measure is especially designed to filter out spurious relationship candidates. The demonstration we've just seen shows how Winyard Intelligence can help us to quickly navigate through unstructured data such as documents, making links between people, organizations, places and other entities, and quickly getting to the most pertinent documents, all without needing to read the original text. Now suppose we have just received a document set but we have no idea what's in it. Let's use the Australian Bikey data again to see how Winyard Intelligence makes this possible. We might want to come back to Anthony Zervis later, so we'll open a new graph to carry out this next exploration. We can then switch between graphs as required. Let's start by seeing what people are mentioned in the documents and how they are related. Instead of searching for an entity, we'll tell the system to graph the most prominent people and their relationships. We can immediately see that the graph has structure. People are grouped into clusters according to how strongly they are related, and this gives us a high-level summary of the bikey scene in Australia. The cluster in the top left centres around Anthony Zervis and contains the other people involved in the Sydney airport brawl. At the bottom left there's a cluster of people with the surname of Ibrahim. Could be a criminal family. If you look carefully, you might see some unexpected names, such as Australian soap star Jody Gordon and also Ryan Stokes, heir to the Channel 7 TV network. If we want to see who the main players are in this data, we can filter the graph in various ways. The first of these is to further filter by relationship strength. As we move the slider, we are eliminating nodes that are not sufficiently strongly related. We now see that some of the strongest relationships are between brothers Anthony and Peter Zervis, and the various members of the Ibrahim family. This doesn't seem too surprising. We also see, however, that a very strong relationship exists between soap star Jody Gordon and alleged bikey Mark Judge. We might want to follow that up later. As well as filtering by relationship strength, we can also use various metrics to filter the entities directly. One such metric is a so-called clique score. What this does is find entities whose immediate neighbourhood is very strongly connected. We would expect such individuals to be important in the motorcycle gang scene. Applying this filter, we immediately eliminate around half of the nodes. We notice, for example, that Anthony Zervis has been eliminated. Although he was central to a major event, he isn't in fact a bikey and is therefore less connected than the others around him. We also notice that Jody Gordon has disappeared. The clique metric appears to successfully sort the bikies from their associates. Another such filter is activity level, which exposes those individuals who are mentioned in the documents more times than their connectedness would suggest. A different set of people emerges this time, now including Anthony Zervis. Jody Gordon is also selected this time. Neither of these people are gang members, but they are connected to the fringes of the gang scene in some important way. Finally, the dominant relationship filter shows us yet another view of our network. You might by now be wondering why soap star Jody Gordon appears in our graph. Let's take a closer look. First, we'll select her network of people and graph them in a new graph. Next, we'll expand her co-located entities. Hmm, why is she connected with cocaine? Let's perform a text search to see what we can find. We'll use the advanced search wizard to help us enter what we want. 
This wizard makes it easy to write complex queries. For example, we can combine multiple terms in various ways, return documents with similar terms rather than exact matches, and take the distance between multiple query terms into account. The search returns the collection of documents satisfying our query. We can also obtain a summary view that gives us an overall picture of what entities the search results contain. Winyard's search engine is highly configurable and can be tailored for specific intelligence needs. In this example, we have used cosine similarity to compare the query to each document, and applied a probabilistic formula to weight rare terms more heavily. The number on the right of each result represents the document's score, which can be used to decide an appropriate cutoff point, where the remaining results are less likely to be what we're looking for. Reading the first returned article, we see that Gordon admitted to taking cocaine with Mark Judge, an alleged Rebels bikie. Hence her connection to the bikie scene and the high number of articles co-locating her and Judge. And Channel 7 air Ryan Stokes? He was her partner at the time. Another way we can find out what documents contain a given pair of entities is by selecting the relationship between them. The documents supporting this relationship now appear in the panel on the right. Another way to get a sense of the data is to view it geographically using Winyard's map view. This will locate entities on the map according to the location they are most strongly associated with. For example, let's bring up the network of most prominent people and see where they end up, based on the place names most commonly mentioned in news articles about them. By exploring this map, we again see data being clustered. Anthony Zervis and the rioters turn up at Sydney Airport. The Ibrahims are clustered around Marylands, where they live. Zooming out and looking at the bigger picture gives us a summary view. Overall, we see that Sydney appears to have the most activity, followed by Adelaide and Perth. Any type of entity can be visualised this way. Here, we have brought up all types. The map view is useful for quickly identifying hotspots and allows us to observe how otherwise unrelated entities may in fact be associated by their location, with this relationship also possibly changing over time. You have seen two ways of using Winyard Intelligence to analyse and explore unstructured data. In the first scenario, Winyard lets you quickly navigate a known entity's connections to lead you to the most relevant data. In the second, we use Winyard to gain an overall view of the structure of the data and to get a sense of which entities are the most important and likely to contain information of interest. The example we used here was news articles about organised motorcycle gangs in Australia, but Winyard can be used to explore many kinds of data, both structured and unstructured, including seized documents, emails and email server logs, financial transactions, building access and telephone logs, and others. Winyard Intelligence does the hard work of exploring your data for you so that you can find what you're looking for much more quickly and effectively.